And I believe that, you know, when the smart people talk about um, there is no growth in the comfort zone, they actually do know what they're talking about. <laughs> Hello everyone, um, this is Javier with Visions Ventures. I have a great episode here with you for you today. I have Julian Alex from Backyard Bookkeeper. It's gonna be great information and knowledge that she, they'll be sharing. So we'll go ahead and start with Alex. Um, can you please let uh, go and describe your business, what you do and, and just, you know, your time. Yeah, um, well, I'm Alex and this is Julie, my business partner. Um, we started a bookkeeping business back in 2008. Today is one of the largest bookkeeping business in the nation. Uh, and I'm very proud to say that because we're not calling ourselves an accounting company, even though we do accounting, except we stop at tax returns. We do not do any income taxes or business taxes at all. We do everything up to that point. Um, usually this kind of businesses, it's a mom and pop shop. It usually run by one person, or maybe they have one or two employees. Um, we're very proud that we've figured out how to scale it and actually um, grow it as big as 50 employees at some point. Right now we're at like 43, 45, I don't even know. Um, so it is possible to scale a business like ours that is B2B. And that's um, our story started in 2008 when you see everything fall down, people lost their houses and everything. Both of us were ba um, barely graduating from school. And um, uh, Julie here started figuring out QuickBooks. Um, she got a part-time job at a chemical company. And she, that was the time when Facebook came out and I started geeking out and figuring out Facebook and Twitter and all of these things. And I saw how much uh, time she was putting in figuring out QuickBooks and how excited she was and everything. And she tried to get this one business, this part-time job that she had this owner to go from dial-up internet to have Wi-Fi in her office <laughs> and go from like um, really, really old QuickBooks to like a newer version. And I saw how committed she was. And I was, I've been an entrepreneur basically all my life. I've been working almost full time since I was 10 years old. Every summer I had a job. Um, and then I was 14 when I got my first full-time job and I started businesses, I sold businesses anyway. So I looked at Julie and I said, hey, I want to make money off of you. Why don't you go and take <laughs> the next part-time job as a contractor and I'll help you find more jobs. Yeah, moral of the story, she was making fun of me for spending more time in QuickBooks than on Facebook. Yeah. So. I was spending more time on Facebook, <laughs> yes. And so, um, well, Look, if you have a passion, why not turn it into an income, right? So that's how Backyard Bookkeeper started and, and in 2008. Yeah, I like the, how you mentioned that it's, um, as I hear the stories, it's something that you pick up, right? And you might not be as knowledgeable at that moment, but you took the initiative of like learning, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that uh, passion of yours and continue growing. And so then when you develop into now a business with 45, you know, employees, it just speaks kind of like how passionate you are about it. You know, you, you're continuing. It's not something you're like, well, you, how you said, you know, you're like, oh, well, is this something that we can, you know, you sell business and all that. But it's something that you bring in and uh, hear employees and from there they're growing and you're building this company and continuing. So I think it's it, that itself it speaks a lot. And, and that's kind of the stories that I like to, you know, to share within the podcast and and like I said before, this is kind of a digital uh, um, journal that everyone can go back and be like, wow, mm -hmm. this is, you know, uh, Backyard Bookkeeper is very inspirational, is very knowledgeable, and they can know that they can start with just purchasing, like, a software and then just learning from there, you know? Well, that's exactly how we started. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> In fact, um, um, well, we started with zero money down. Okay. And, I mean, we registered the LLC, right? But the biggest investment that we had in the company at the very beginning was actually Twitter was starting to get 
Okay. Now X started to get pretty big, and they did a lot of giveaways. And uh, if you, like they did it in such a way that like you had 30 seconds to answer for something, and then if you answered, be the then, sixth person yes, to respond yes, to this to, tweet. Yes. And we'll and you give get you this. a free copy yeah, of yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, and wow. we, we won <laughs> we won a free copy of like I think it was like from an other accounting company or we don't remember who we got it from, but it was like QuickBooks Enterprise or something. Okay. And at that time that software costed about like market value was about fifteen thousand dollars. Oh wow. And uh, we went and we sold it to like a market. We put it back on. We, so we got the software and then we put it back on on Craigslist and we sold it for like $5,000. <laughs> 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 so that was, that, the was big, that was a big, huge investment. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Twitter. <laughs> yeah. But it's also, it's also you take, you see that um, it's when something like that, you can either spend it unwisely or use that to you know, continue with that passion, right? Like you, you got that, sold it, and then you, you can either say, okay, well, I'm just going to like spend it on, on a bag or something. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, hey, yeah. Let's yeah. make something yeah. out of it. So, yeah. and so since you both, since 2008, how do you feel that, um, that's the company now, like what you're working together? Is it something that's, uh, how has that, that evolved since the beginning of you two working? It's evolved a lot. Um, <laughs> what there, do you do? Maybe tell oh, yes. Yeah, it, What well, do you do in, in the <laughs> yeah. company? And what well, do I do? There were stages of growth, right? So in the beginning, it was just the two of us. Alex was essentially marketing because okay. I had no clue how to even do that. Me neither, but um, I figured it out. <laughs> you're one of those people that's got a natural aptitude for it. Yeah, but for the strategy, whereas... I don't, but I have an aptitude for accounting. But remember, so my first out, right? computer that I've ever owned was in like 2000. The first computer I ever owned was in 2005. Wow. <laughs> so anyway, go. Okay. Um, yeah, so in the beginning, you were just figuring out how to do marketing, and I was, and we were hiring out my time. Um, so that was stage one. I would say stage two was when we started hiring employees. Alex had to like, she's, she's the one who had to talk me into it. It was pretty funny. Like, you know, here's the math behind it. Like if we add an employee and then we are charging this much for the time and you know, yes. and so I needed some convincing. Um, I will say our very first hire was an absolute disaster. <laughs> like oh, it was such a bad hire. I mean, she interviewed really well, but had no clue what she was doing. Um, but we did finally figure that out, and I'd say that next stage of growth was, um, it was still mostly Alex and me, but we started bringing in some part-time help, you know, okay. from one to like six or seven employees was that next stage. Um, then we kind of reached another inflection point where we, we really needed to figure out um, it, how, how to grow past that point. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that... Um, there, the, dis the, the thing that helped us kind of transition into the next stage, actually, was turning our service into basically a subscription. Okay. Rather than going from, it, so pr previously it had just been hourly. We, we work hours, mm -hmm. we build a client, and then we go and we try and collect money from everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, the, we, we had a company car, like, I was using to, to drive around and visit clients and do work on site. And um, in one year, no, not one year, like three years, we put um, almost 100,000 miles on that car. Wow. Um, just driving all over the Utah, Valley, Utah and yeah. Salt Lake counties, um, just picking up checks mostly. Like it was stupid, picking up checks, right? And so when we got a merchant processor in place and we we got onto this rhythm where we could auto bill clients. That was a huge thing because it meant that we could reduce the amount of administrative burden mm -hmm. on the business and we could just focus on doing the work. So I would say that's like stage three. Yeah, and that's very important. Like um, when you start a business, you the only thing that you can think of is, okay, how much money am I making and how much money am I spending, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we're working in bookkeeping and accounting, so that's a very important subject, right? 
But a lot of times, new business owners don't think about a very, very simple fact, which is your time is more valuable than going and picking mm -hmm. up checks. So it is totally and absolutely worth 3% of a merchant fee for you to not have to drive, spend money <laughs> in the car, yeah. time in the, in the car, um, and put mileage on your car <laughs> that is brand new. Like It's totally worth that 3% to make sure that you have more time to be in multiple places or to hire or to or to get more clients or to put it into marketing like your time as a business owner is the one that is way more valuable you know mm -hmm. um and that's like a lot of people even today which is i think real 21st century they're afraid of signing up for a merchant processor mm -hmm. and there are so many options you could do yeah like there are so many options you could do like you could have the client pay for the merchant fee. You could pick it up and you pay for it. Mm -hmm. But regardless of what you decide, your time is the most valuable. Like we wasted so much time the first three years of our business by going back and forth and picking up checks, mm. you know? Yeah. And then you sign up for something that automates your life and you suddenly like, Oh, I have time to get more clients. Are, <laughs> automations are worth paying yeah. for. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not every automation, right? But um, it's it's the kind of thing it's it's worth paying a little bit extra for, yeah. you know? And I think it's, uh, you know, instead of, you could have hired someone to just drive around, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. The simple so solution, someone would have been like, oh, I just hired someone just to drive around and pick up the payments. But as you see, yeah. as technology evolves, and that's kind of like technology is evolving. So why not make it? work for you right yep. so use automation the yep. subscriptions yeah. and to make that easier on you where you now like you mentioned before you mentioned is i can go out there and get more clients because now that's the time i'm getting back from not driving around picking up checks and yeah. also you're saving money on the long run where you don't have to worry about <clears throat> the expense of, of fixing your car as yeah. you know anything that does come up yeah. yep. <clears throat> and so i know in the beginning uh before we start, you know i started recording uh, Julie, you, you said yeah, you're the more of the finance guru side of. I, the, I'm the technical the te person. technical yeah. person, correct? Yeah. And then Alex, you said you're more of the marketing with um, kind the of vision. Management the visionary and yeah. strategy. Yeah, the visionary. Yeah. Yes, I have visions. Don't ask. <laughs> don't ask my employees. They like Alex. Again. Well, Javier has visions too. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It, absolutely. What's yeah. your What's your podcast? Name? Uh, visions to ventures. Did you see exactly. <laughs> you vision. You envision it, and then you turn it into a venture. Correct. And that's kind of like what what made it right. Is is like it it is you know as adventurous is you know taking a risk right. If you don't take that risk. And how you hear is like, without risk, there's no rewards, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like, you have that vision and you create something from it. And anyways, that's kind of, you fall right into like, yeah. <laughs> the whole, both of you and your company. So um, how do you, uh, as your business is evolving, how do you keep it exciting and also relevant with, with the clients? Kind of like, you know, what is this something that um, you use technology-wise can be? Um. Well, I'll, let, let me put it this way. So people hire, uh, people outsource their bookkeeping specifically because they don't find the bookkeeping exciting, yeah. right? So I, I would say like making bookkeeping <clears throat> exciting for clients, um, I don't know if that's achievable, but um, we can certainly take away the stress in, inherent in their bookkeeping. Um, and, and that's what we strive for, is, is giving that peace of mind to our clients, that, that the records are, keep, are taken care of, um, that the records are accurate. And, uh, and so we focus on providing valuable information to the client. So um, financial statements that are good enough in October and November to take to your CPA and do a little bit of tax planning before the end of the year. Or something that you could review with a financial planner or a CFO type of role and make strategic decisions about your business. Um, statements that you could take to the bank and get um, financing based on, right? We, we have to hold ourselves and hold, you know, and make sure that we're providing um, financial, uh, financial reporting that meets a certain standard. So we just make sure we As you can that. tell, <laughs> she gets very passionate about explaining the accounting and sometimes so passionate that she forgets to answer the question. 
how we keep it relevant is that we are geeks. I'm a huge geek. Mm -hmm. And we make sure that we always use the latest software. Mm, okay. um, at the beginning of our business, I figured out the way on how to sign up her to be a beta tester for QuickBooks. Okay. And so she would get the software for free if she <laughs> answered a couple of questions. Um, and in, the, in today's world of AI, we know that sooner or later, we're going to be jobless, mm -hmm. right? Because AI sooner or later is coming for our jobs because data entry, um, data entry and compiling the data, right? You, mm -hmm. You're yeah. agreeing with me. It Absolutely. is coming and, mm -hmm. and, and the computers and AI is going to be a better bookkeeper than we are. But one thing that we do is I watch the trends like a hawk. And my goal is that backyard bookkeeper, when that time comes, it's not going to be in the front of AI. It's going to be in the back of AI, okay. which means hopefully those who are developing all of these softwares will come to us or to this beautiful brain of hers <laughs> and say, hey, how can we implement all of your knowledge mm -hmm. into our software? And that's one thing that we actually do with another one of our business um, is that we... Uh, consult on software development that okay. has to do with accounting. Yeah. And uh, we kind of built a pretty reputable name for ourselves. Yeah. Speaking of, you have to follow up with somebody about it. I know. <laughs> yeah, yes. go. Sorry. No, no. And, uh, well, you know, with bringing up AI, it's some kind of like, it's, I, I bring it up with cautiously sometimes because, you know, when you talk about AI, it's like, oh, well, it's going to take some jobs. And of course, right? Like, Absolutely, you, it's going it, to. It, you know? yeah. but, but it's also going to create other jobs. Correct. Yeah. It creates opportunities. And, yeah. I, and I see those opportunities when I when people just uh, assume they're like, oh, well, AI can just do whatever for me, right? For example, like if I start having to do like the recording or the scripts and stuff like that, yes, it can do it for, but it's, it still needs my input. And if I don't know how to input it correctly, then it's not going to... It's not going to be me. So, yeah. so right now it's helping. So this, this is kind of how I think about it. Okay. So if, if we're talking about an accounting, um, the, for the, the, account, the context okay. of accounting, right? You have different levels of work, right? You've got at the bottom of the pole, you've got data entry, okay. right? You just have to put transactions into your accounting software, okay. right? You have to do the invoicing. You have to enter payments received. <clears throat> You have to enter amounts due to your vendors, whatever, right? So this is data entry right at the bottom. Um, and this is where a lot of mistakes get made. Um, just typos, you know, whatever kinds of software errors you're running into, right? Um, and then right above that, you have kind of the first level of review. You've got bank reconciliations, making sure that the transactions that are in the software match the bank's records. Okay. Um, then above that, you have, well, there's other kinds of external sources to compare against. So like if it's a more complex business, let's say e-commerce, mm -hmm. right? You have the bank records, but then you also have like Shopify's reporting from the website, how much was sold, all of the different things happening on the back end there. So you also need to make sure that your records match the, you know, your platform records or your vendors records. Okay. Like, so there's, there's kind of this next level quality issue. Um, you're talking about the quality of the data, the integrity of the data, um, there's also other questions to be asked, like, how well do my expense categories match what I'm doing, right? Okay. Um, so depending on the business, you might want a little bit more detail or maybe a little bit less detail. So these are all, at this point, we're still talking about lower level accounting. Mm -hmm. This all falls under bookkeeping in, you know, most people's understanding of what bookkeeping is. Then you start getting into things like budgeting, okay. right? And then you start talking about like forecast. So budgeting is, you know, looking at the past and then kind of planning for okay. the future. But then you also have forecasting, you know, and the ability to say, well, if we invested X amount of dollars into advertising, how much more would we get into sales, mm -hmm. right? And so playing with these kinds of numbers. So you can see as we go up the totem pole, it's getting more and more complex. Yeah. So AI right now is at the bottom of this. Well, if you think about and it, what is QuickBooks? It's AI. Yeah, it's it got used a lot to of be, AI already built in. Yeah, it yep. used to be the general ledger was this green paper, you know? <laughs> and then QuickBooks came around and everybody was like, oh no, 
it's, yeah. but it is so, true. So AI so it might be has it. started doing the lower level stuff. Okay. And it's going to get better over time, right? Because AI learns. So AI is going to do that lower level stuff and it's either going to replace it entirely or it's going to enable bookkeepers to do more of the work faster, right? You yeah. already experienced this, yes. Javier, um, in, in your work, yeah. right? Where you might have had to spend like six hours editing one hour's worth of video. Yes. Now you can probably do it in significantly less because you feed it into an AI engine, do yes. some tweaks, and it spits out what you want, Correct. right? Um, That's a good thing. So over time, what I see happening is AI is going to kind of move up this mm. totem pole, if you want to call it. Like, it's going to move up this scale of simple to complex. It's going to get better. It's going to be able to do more of the things. And so our challenge is going to be to learn those things and stay on top of it mm. okay. so that we can either train the AI or as people use more AI tools, we'll provide that external um, that external perspective to make sure that it's doing what's actually necessary. Right? You know, the meta, m metaverse. The meta, yes, I do. Yeah, I actually started creating Backyard Bookkeeper in Did the Did you metaverse. really? Yes. <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm a geek, I stand up. I'm not good at it, but I, I have started creating it. And so my half body sometimes went to networking events and That's... asked people like, hey, how are you doing? And what are you doing? I... And so. Yeah, yeah, so like, the, the key to success in this environment is being aware of what's happening. What are the pieces that AI is going to take away? And how do you use that? You know, not how you fight it, but like how do you use it to move yourself up that okay. scale? Uh, see, I, I like the that knowledge of just, you know, as someone from looking from the outside, it's like, oh, it was just They're data. Just bookkeeper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's Regina. not something to be resentful but, about, you know, but, it's, uh, yeah. you know, it's an opportunity. But it's it's like you you're looking at the behind the scenes. You're like this is more in depth of like what's going on. Yep. And then you mentioned uh, the vi you know the visionary right, Alex, uh, with the whole metaverse. That's something that you know you're picking up and you're learning right. You're doing all this, yeah. Yeah. and that's kind of what people are eventually. That's something I you know consider like I'm doing with the whole podcast. It's something else, but it's not on my. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> to think how like it's not just uh, interviews. It, it's more like bookkeeping. It's everything, right? You can put it into that yeah. metaverse. Imagine if you could even, if you could be the first podcaster in the metaverse. I think Mark already Mark Zuckerberg already took that. <laughs> he did one, but you know, it's uh, uh, <laughs> there's there's visions. There's yeah. things that you know I'm working on. But that's that's <clears throat> that's essentially what Backyard Bookkeeper is. Um, VR, I believe <clears throat> that we are the bookkeepers that disrupt the industry. Mm -hmm. We are the bookkeepers that, number one, we're really good at what we do. Mm -hmm. Number two, every it's part of our interview process, and we have sometimes five interviews for one bookkeeper. Oh my gosh. We go through some really, like, demanding interviews but the number one question that we have is do you love doing it so if somebody comes to us and says in an interview process we ask so why do you like bookkeeping and they say oh because i'm so organized and i'm so blah 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 right usually we know they just honestly want to suck up in the interview <laughs> right um i really like numbers I yes like math. yes yeah. yes yeah. right but if if we meet one, if you meet the potential um, candidate who says, "I love bookkeeping because you know when you're just missing that fifty cents when you reconcile <laughs> that bank account and you just cannot find it," we know we got somebody. Cool, oh wow! You know? <laughs> yeah. and these people are crazy. They're yeah. geeks, and 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 you should see us when we get together because even though we're a remote company, mm -hmm. we've been remote before it was cool. We've been remote since 2009, basically. One of our employees who we love, absolutely adore that woman to death, one night writes us an email and says, it was like midnight, I think. She writes us an email and says she was, at that point, we still had this idea of having an office and people yeah. would come in and we would be like, yeah. yeah, we would be like, you know, we have a, a front, uh, front, uh, what do you call it? front store or whatever? Storefront. Storefront, Storefront. and people would come in mm -hmm. and they would sit down and they would want to ask for bookkeeping and whatever. And so we had this particular employee and friend of ours um, 
come down from Bountiful to Salt Lake every day to Sugar House for work, right? And so one day she wrote and said, this is the best job I've ever had, but I love my family more. Mm. I, I need to spend my time with my family. So hereby I'm giving you my two weeks notice. What she was not expecting is that I took a, about half an hour to think about it and I said, you know what, Chantal, you can work from home. And that's how it started. In 2009, we went completely remote. Wow. We threw out the idea of having offices, having anything. Mm -hmm. um, and what's, was, what was really cool in our business that not many people know, in 2011, I graduated. And I had the option of staying and keep going to school or because I'm an immigrant, right? Mm -hmm. So it was, it was very hard. Um, do I stay? and keep going to school, or am I returning back to home and taking care of my, my dad? So I decided to go home. And Julia at the time said, you know what, I always wanted to live in Europe, can I come? Oh, wow. So basically what we did, <laughs> we outsourced the management. Usually when we're talking mm -hmm. about outsourcing, it's usually the work that gets outsourced. Okay. We outsourced the management <laughs> to Romania. We yeah. offshored ourselves to Romania lived 50% cheaper uh -huh. than we would have lived in Salt Lake City, and we took that money and reinvested it into the company. Mm. And not by just having remote employees, we also, we were the ones who were really remote from our employees mm -hmm. because everybody was in Utah, right? Yeah. So we learned all the tech technology. Yeah. We learned all the softwares we used probably you don't even know what GoToMeeting is. No. Or uh, <laughs> a, a bunch of other yeah. software. So we, Zoom was cool. Yeah, we went through generations of software to make it work, you know? So when COVID hit and everybody had to walk away from the office, we were like, yeah, everyone's scrambling. It didn't hurt us at all. That made some aspects of our business so much easier. Mm -hmm. So yeah. before 2020, um, it was extremely rare for us to get on Zoom with a client. Um, we pretty much conducted our business over phone and email only, mm. um, and occasional in-person visits in the offices, um, for local clients only, of course. And, uh, when COVID hit and suddenly everybody had to figure out Zoom, like now it's pretty standard. We have a, yeah. an onboarding Zoom call with every single new client. And it's, it's been very, very good for our business and no one thinks it's weird anymore and everybody knows how to do it and... You know, you see, like all yeah. the tech barriers. Like, AI dissolved. is very good. I mean, yeah. any tech is really a AI. And yeah. I think the next step, the next step, right, with Alex and your company is uh, eventually going to be in the metaverse, right? Yes. Everyone, once every every household every has those those you know those <laughs> goggles, just headsets. like I can't wait for. Um, the, let's not advertise. No. But the big, huge fruit company to come out with their headsets. <laughs> <laughs> the fruit company. <laughs> the fruit company. <laughs> Um, Alex, you, you mentioned... Except if you would like to sponsor Javier's I... software, then I will gladly say your name for the company. <laughs> I know, hide everything, right? Uh, Alex, you mentioned with, uh, you know, as immigrant, right? You went to, after you graduated, you decided, you decided either I go back and work and... Um, do you, did you see that being an immigrant as a challenge? Like starting a business? Is, is it something that's, that you can say, wow, like... I, I had a roadblock or not a roadblock, but now you, you, you know, succeeded on that? Um, it's a very, and not because I'm a stuck up person, I'm probably am <laughs> a stuck up person for other people, but um, it is very hard for me to think about my life in any way, shape or form as a roadblock. I don't feel like um, I have regrets or any of my hardships when I think about them. I never think about them as painful. I think about every single thing that is hard in my life. I think of, okay, what's the lesson that I need to learn from here, right? So um, when it comes to starting a business in America, I didn't start it. She started it and I just helped, okay. right? Um, it was a challenge in the fact that, as I said, my first computer was in 2005, right? Um, I learned English when I came here. I mean, I, I knew very little English mm -hmm. and I had to learn. 
Um, and especially what really, really helped me was starting to go to networking events and actually force myself to get out of the comfort, comfort um, zone. And I believe that, you know, when the smart people talk about um, there is no growth in the comfort zone, they actually do know what they're talking about, right? <laughs> we look at, I'm just going to give some big names here. We look at like, I don't know, Bill Gates or, or uh, what's the Amazon guy's name? Um, Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos, or I'm not going to talk about... Elon Musk because he's in a com he he got he got plenty of money from Daddy but I'm talking about this other two this like entrepreneurs the, the only look at them yeah. as oh they're millionaires today but I've read Jeff Bezos um, life story it was not easy nobody believed I mean if you want to talk about AI or like if you want to talk about evo evolution yeah. in technology think about his story yeah. he basically started a bookstore on the internet. It was unheard of. Nobody yeah. could even imagine that they're not mm. going to, what was it, Brookstone or whatever, that they're not going and smelling the book. <laughs> everybody Orders, everybody yeah. told him he's yeah. crazy, yeah. right? And he started in this little garage. Everybody started in the garage. And, and this, Amazon doesn't even identify as a bookstore not anymore, anymore, which yeah. I find fascinating. You yeah. Know? yeah. It was such a, it was such a kick-ass idea. And it was executed so well and grew so fast, but yet they've already had to pivot multiple times in mm -hmm. order to remain yeah. successful. And they've but, done it great. But the point is that nobody, when you succeed, nobody thinks about, oh my gosh, what you've done. They think about, oh my gosh, how lucky you are. I mean, mm, if there is one thing that drives me off the walls, <laughs> it is when somebody says, oh, you're so lucky. You went to America. I'm like, you have no idea. This is the country of opportunities. Mm -hmm. But man, if you don't work your butt off, it's worse than in any other country. Yeah. Because there is so much more competition. You know, let's say in Europe you have a hundred people applying for one job, okay. right? Um, in Hungary or Romania, in America you have thousands yeah. applying for that one job. So it's 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 not easy to make it, and especially you don't like the government here in America. Um, doesn't really help small business. Yeah. There is like people, I, I often get the question, not really. No, not no. small. No. You know, if you start making billions of dollars, then you have a lot of tax write offs and a lot of <laughs> little yeah. there's this, things. There's but this really small un, business? Yeah. There, well, like micro business. Let's micro talk business. About, like, yes. Micro business, not a big deal. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just talking about self-employed people. Yeah. But then there's this really uncomfortable space um, up in, and it's it's from like, I don't know, from that kind of micro business, solo entrepreneur level. Um, like when you start making um, like six figures, right, mm -hmm. um, in revenue for your business, that's um, that's when it gets really uncomfortable tax wise. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and it's it's probably not until you're making a few million where you can really um, where you can really do enough tax strategy well, to make it. But worthwhile. not even talking so like, about business, yeah. not even talking about business, looking at the two cultural differences. Right. Um, I'll, I'll talk to you about I was originally I was born in Romania, but I grew up in Hungary. Okay. So I'm from both countries. And but I know the Hungarian, I, I know Hungary better and the Hungarian labor laws a little bit better. Um, I'm, I'll just give you an example. This is what's, what people don't understand about America, right? That yes, this is the country of opportunities and you have a lot of opportunities because it's a huge country, right? Um, but you as an employee, you work so much harder in this country than any anywhere else except if you're like working for like big huge corporations that have the money to pay for your health care yeah. that yeah. have this and that retirement but even those countries even those companies do not get a real help from the government in europe the way it works is that the government substitutes some of the health care mm. it's not just the company by itself that has okay. to pay for it um, the government substitutes 
for women who give birth, mm -hmm. they substitute to stay home for almost two years, sometimes three years. Yeah. Yeah. Right? In Subsidized America, that's like yeah. unheard of. Correct. Right? So, yes, this is the country of opportunity, but it, you have so much time, less time off. You have so much, mm. you have to work your butt off too. Yep. So, as an immigrant, everybody who's an immigrant in this country, I know how hard it is to make a difference. It's mm. it's huge. Yeah. It's it's very hard. It's the thing that's that's easier here is the administrative and bureaucratic barriers mm -hmm. to starting a business are much much lower than yes. many other countries, right? So in the state of Utah, it's to create an LLC, you can do it yourself online. It costs eighty sure. bucks, I yes. think, <laughs> and then like twenty five a year or twenty a year to renew. Okay. Um, you know, and then then you're fine. You know, you've got the legal protection and everything. Like, okay. yeah. there's nothing else to do. I mean, unlo unless you've got like a, a physical location, you have to get a city license and stuff like that. But but even that, it's just yeah. a matter of like fill out a form online, pay a fee, you're done. You know, um, in a, in other places, like you have to hire a lawyer, you have to like create organizing documents and triplicate, get them notarized. Mm -hmm walk them into the various oh government offices. You know, <laughs> yes. like, it's just crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. So, um, like, from that standpoint, it's yeah. really easy to get started, right? But then the work to maintain it, that's... Correct. Yeah. yeah that's but where that was, that was, I think, la language was hard mm -hmm. for me. Um, the cultural differences, even today, it's showing, even in my company. I mean, you know, I own four companies. I work with a lot of different people. Um, but especially with my employees, um, in America, we focus so much on um, first um, appreciating and then giving feedback, mm. right? In Europe, you get feedback first. <laughs> That's not feedback. <laughs> and then you will say appreciation. Yeah. And sometimes I know I go overboard. I know that my European self comes out and... and Especially because I've been a survivor all my life. I, you know, I had to work to yeah. to help my family, to help myself. Um, when there is a problem to solve, and you just said the word problem, I'm done listening to all the good stuff. I just go like I deep into it. And so sometimes because of that, I come, I completely come through as a jerk. Okay. Even though I'm not trying to be a jerk. And, and that's because I'm not acknowledging all the good stuff yes. around it. It's because There's I a go, problem. Must fix. Yes, I yeah. go. Like my brain <laughs> is just like, yeah. okay, I need to go to the problem, yeah. right? Yeah. So the cultural differences, I can see. That's that's a huge, especially when you're in a leadership or, um, you know, I, I I believe I'm a I'm a good person and I always look for the good in people, but I'm also very stubborn, yeah. you know, and that stubbornness comes from learning how to survive yeah. wow <laughs> uh, i i liked you know he, uh just hearing that it's you know people can see from the outside and be like okay this everything's going uh and it is going great right but i'll see that person and that you know the company and all that so um i wanted to go back with with the financials uh julie as someone who's starting off with the business what financial advice would you give them as far as, you know, okay. going with them like, yeah. yeah, this is actually, this is something <clears throat> I've been thinking about. Like, I feel like one of the things that is needed in the market is like, do it yourself guide to mm -hmm. like, how, how, like what are, what are the main ingredients? Like the easiest steps, right? Because I mean, you can find all of this information online, but how do you, how do you choose the right, um, the right source? How do you make sure that you've, you know, dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. Um, I would say for someone who's just starting out, um, number one, um, look at your business idea. If there is any kind of potential that at some point in the future you will, number one, either hire employees or number two, ever get sued. <laughs> <laughs> like if, and I've had this conversation even with... Um, a friend of ours who was an artist, I was telling, I was telling her, you should, you should set up an LLC for yourself. She was saying, but I, why? Like, why do I even need it? And I said, well, I don't know. Maybe you paint an ugly picture of somebody's kid and they sue you or something, <laughs> right? Um, but 
So that's a little bit of a ridiculous no, 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 yeah. example, right? But any, like the vast majority of businesses have some kind of potential liability, mm -hmm. right? And so when you have liability, you want to protect yourself because if you were to ever mess up and someone were to come after you, if you don't have a legal structure in place, mm -hmm. you could lose your house. You this could lose LLC your stands for limited liability company, okay. right? Yeah. Um, so an LLC um, is a way to, it creates a business as a separate entity from yourself. And if that business gets sued for any reason, then the liability is limited to the assets of that separate entity, of that, of that business you created. So in that case, they can't come after your home. They can't come after your car or any other property or assets that you own. So it's a way to protect yourself. So create an LLC. There's a lot of information online about how to do it. My best advice to anyone um, listening or watching would be find out which, um, which office in your state deals with it. Like if, if you can't find information that makes it really simple and easy to do online in your state, um, find the government office and call them and ask. Like there has to be a way to file this online. What's my process? What website do I use? Um, I think a lot of people just, they don't, it doesn't occur to them to pick up the phone and call, but just do it. In Utah, it's the, uh, the Division of Corporations, okay. part of the Department of Commerce. It's corporations.utah.gov. You can do it all online. Um, this there's is plenty. not a paid sponsorship. I know. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> but if you'd like to sponsor, have <laughs> here. But, but, um, and I will also say, uh, people stress out about what kind of business to set up. Yeah. Um, and an LLC is the simplest kind. If you, if it's just you, make it a single member LLC. That will keep your taxes simple, and it will keep your life simple. Okay. The minute you involve a second person, the the business has to have a separate tax return, which is going to make your tax preparation more expensive. Mm. And there's probably going to be other legal stuff that you need okay. to do. So I, I tell people single member LLC is the very simplest structure that you can create that's going to be cheap, easy to maintain, um, and, and easy to manage. So yeah. I would say that. Okay. And start, start from the very, very, very beginning. Start tracking your expenses. Okay and your income. You can do it in a spreadsheet, Google Docs, whatever. Um, QuickBooks has, does it, do they still have a free software? No. Um, okay. But so there are it, some other yeah. software. Do you Come, want us to say some software? No, or no, no? Yeah. or you can, yeah. or in, yeah. So here's, here's one really key thing, which is once you've created your business, you go and you open a bank account for that okay. business. And any income you earn, you deposit into the bank account, even if it's cash. Mm -hmm. Even if it's Venmo, you take that Venmo or PayPal balance and you transfer it into that bank account. And then when you want to pay yourself, you transfer it out to your personal account or you withdraw it in okay. cash. Okay. So you put all of your business income into that account. So if you were to look at a bank statement, you could see all those deposits and you would add up the deposits and that would match your income. And then any expenses you pay, um, you pay them out of that same account. If you want to use a credit card for your business, um, you can either set one up through the bank for, um, for the business or also totally acceptable, use a personal card, but Devoted. make it a designated Pers card yeah. for the business. So like, here's my Capital One card. It's got my personal name on it, not the company, but I'm only going to put it on, put business expenses on it and I'm going to pay the card from the business account. That's the best way to go. And then your entire record of income and expenses is in the same accounts, right? And it's not mixed in with anything else. This is the very simplest way to do bookkeeping. Um, and uh, like I said, then you pay yourself by just transferring funds from your bank account to your personal. Um, so that's the most practical advice. A lot of, if you're really trying to do it yourself and keep it cheap, um, these days a lot of banks offer some kind of internal categorization so like you can go into the yes, bank account and you can say, okay, this was software, this was travel, whatever, you know? And so you could actually create some reporting within the bank website. Um, besides that, Wave is free. Um, QuickBooks these days gets a little bit pricey, um, but that's kind of the industry standard and it's accepted by all accountants everywhere. Um, their cheap version starts at $30 a month. I was going to say, 
This is sponsored by. <laughs> no, no, no. But no, no, no. Into it, if you'd like to sponsor, have your podcast. <laughs> Two things I was gonna say is this is value information, but I was gonna say I, I do like how Alex you mentioned Julie. You know, this is when you get this is your. She gets right? it. She, she gets, gets it. This is getting passionate about the technical details. And it's stuff that I'm like uh, I'm, <clears throat> at the moment I'm like okay, but when I'm go back I'm like oh my gosh, is it? It's stuff that. You need you need to listen and and as an entrepreneur business owner, right? You need to like listen to this and actually do it, you right? Because you don't want to mm-hmm. be at the wrong side of the of the ball. But I also was gonna say, um, but that's for your whole business, right? Instead of yep. them dealing with, like uh, yep. business owners dealing with all that, they can just go through your company and. Yeah, we can have them from the very from beginning. The- <laughs> we set up the software for you. We can give you any training if you want to do it yourself. Um, we make sure that you have the systems in place. We can do it all for you and just send you reports every month. Um, there's all kinds of things. Yep. We And we serve businesses from that micro, yeah. you know, micro business all the way up to like wow. eight Millions, figures. Billions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. I like it. Maybe not a billion, but. <laughs> okay, you know, <laughs> hey, hey, you, you gotta like, she has I, a vision. She's I'm already 16 steps ahead of her. <laughs> She's already met a billionaire in the metaverse, so you Yes, right, right, right. Okay. I'm uh, not telling you about my metaverse business. <laughs> um, I was gonna, I wanted to say, uh, when you first, and you can either, uh, at one, one point in the business, was there a setback that you just were like, this is it, I'm going to not pursue this company anymore. You're like, or was it something that you were like, okay, it might be a little bump on the road here, but I'm going to continue. For, and, you know, there have been a couple. Be there have been a couple. Um, I think the biggest one is sometimes it's employees. Mm. When um, they don't see your vision. And why mm. would they? It's yeah. not their, yeah. It's not their thing. So, for a long, long time, every single time somebody would quit, I would take it as a failure. Mm. And it took me a long time to realize, no, I'm still a good company, regardless if somebody quits or not. Yeah. Um, and everybody has their own things. But the biggest setup, was this, the biggest one was when we actually moved to um, Romania. Um, we had at that time, we had about three or four employees left in Utah. And one of them started losing a lot of our clients. Oh, wow. um, and it was pretty scary. And um, I mean, we don't, we don't blame her at all. It was, it was unheard of that the bosses are going to move out of the country, yeah. right? So it's, I mean, it was a lot of pressure. We still had offices at the time, mm-hmm. um, and so that was a huge expense. And on top of that, at some point, she said she basically demanded a um, salary. A salary, and we, again, we do not blame her in any way, shape, yeah. or form, because for the responsibilities that she had, we totally got why she wanted the salary, right? But we were not making enough yet to pay her salary and the offices mm-hmm. and everything, right? And so that was that was a very scary thing when you realize that um, you might not be able to make payroll next yeah. month, you know? I, I think at the time, and we were still very small, um, I added it up. She was costing, you know, between her, her salary and various things that we needed to support her, having her as an employee, she was costing us um, close to six thousand dollars a month. Oh wow! And she was generating twenty seven hundred. Oh wow! So yeah. yeah, yeah, that that was that was a rough a rough. But moment. that was the yeah. first the first one, um, and um, it was hard. Yeah. Um, but if you believe in something, here's the truth. I believe that being an accountant and if you're thinking about starting your own accounting company number one think about do you want to start it by yourself if not come to us we'll start it together we'll add you to our there you collective go. we have a lot of experience um but i there is a joke that i usually say and i say there are two jobs if the end of the world is going to come is going to survive number one is going to be a grave digger mm-hmm. we will need a grave yeah. digger 
Three Number jobs. That's what I said, three jobs. You said two. You said two. Oh, I'm not three. <laughs> <laughs> we can look at that. You guys can tell us what you said. I said three. I think I said three. Maybe show three. Okay. Um, so, grave digger. We will need a mechanic or an engineer okay. to restart the economy yeah. because we will need machines and stuff. And then the third, we need an accountant to tell these two if they have enough money to start their business. <laughs> so no there matter what, I think we're safe at yes. some point. <laughs> so we're no good. And and that's and, and that's it's a joke, but there there are many, many, mm -hmm. many businesses started. And in fact, when the economy goes bad and people start losing their jobs, what do you think they're doing? They start side hustles. Yeah. They start side side hustles, even if it's just driving around mm -hmm. for Uber, even if it's just yes. this. So no matter what, we will always have clients. Love. Love that, yeah. yeah. You know, so um, when you're down, what you have to think like that's when I think that's when it's the most important that you have a partner, that you have a um, coach, that you have a mentor, that you have mm -hmm. somebody who says and brings you back and says, but can you can you get yourself out of the ditch mm -hmm. and look just 16 step, steps yeah. ahead, you know? And and I think that's that's where our our partnership works very great, is that we have defined from the very beginning what I, I know a lot of businesses where the partners start mm -hmm. having issues with each other because it's money, because it's whatever, or because they step, they keep stepping on each other's yeah. toes, right? And so a lot of businesses fail because they, the partners stick. I won't deny, yeah. we've had our moments. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and I'm European, I yell a lot. So, um, but defining the roles in the partnership, mm -hmm. you know, she's operations. Mm -hmm. I'm good I at one am, thing. Yeah. I am Goodness. partnerships, I am marketing, I am um, the visionary. Yeah. I'm the one who goes to her and says, okay, we're in a ditch. But this is what I'm going to do about yeah. it. And one thing about me is um, in panic situations, that's when I act. Mm. And then I crush later. <laughs> you know? So when we're in the ditch, I'll get us out. Yeah. Um, yes. But then I, 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 need, I need my own time to just crash. Yeah. Speaking so. of vision and, and difficult time, like things that we've struggled with, um, one thing I wanted to say about that is that we have, we've discovered, especially through you know, recent growth over the past couple of years, you know, we, we have this, we have a very clear and big vision for what we want mm -hmm. to achieve with Backyard Bookkeeper. And, um, at times we have invited our team to contribute to that vision. And that is, that's where we've struggled because that vision is ours alone. Mm -hmm. And when we have invited others to try to contribute to it, that has not gone very well. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and part of our recent learning has just been, no, as leaders, it's our job to provide the vision and to, um, hype it up for, for lack of a better <laughs> word, like get people excited about it and then give them the direction. Just tell them this is okay. This is the vision. Are you excited about it? Are you on board? Okay. Here's what we need you to do. Um, because if you leave too much room for interpretation, yeah. they don't, they just, even if they love their jobs, even if they love the company, they just, they still don't have that same level of, of, uh, investment mm -hmm. right as an entrepreneur um you can't expect it's, that it's not well, their it's not their company well it's you not know, you and i we're all in right mm -hmm. because we have we've put all of the years into it yeah. we put all of the time all of the money and guess what we also carry all of the risk mm -hmm. and that's something that employees they just don't feel it um they do, the stakes are not nearly as high for them yeah. because they can just go out and get another job, right? And we can do that too if things were to fail, but we carry all of the, yeah. all of the risk and the liability yeah. and any debt we have with us and we wouldn't be able to get rid of it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's this big load to carry. Um, so not that I, I ever want to scare anybody about hiring because that's how you multiply your mm -hmm. efforts and that's how you really grow. And I think one of the, it's, it's, 
as a business owner, you have to to weigh the risks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I risk this, I can gain this, yeah. right? And it's not just in financial situations where you need to forecast. It's in everything, mm -hmm. right? If I keep going, I will stay in the ditch. I will be very comfortable. I will learn how to eat from the bottom. But if I go out, I can find this beautiful yeah. field with mm -hmm. all of these things. So I just need to crawl out of it, right? Um, <clears throat> So you have to weigh, I think the, there was, so we talked about the struggles in our business, mm -hmm. right? That was, that, that was a big struggle and vision and all of mm -hmm. these things. But what really made a huge difference is when we started risking of how many people we hired. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that also backfired on us, right? Multiple at times point, because, yeah. not at one point, multiple, multiple times. Multiple times, yeah. Yeah. Where we would hire too much or... Because what we do is we hire people and we give them the training and then they just leave. Yeah. We don't have, at Backyard Bookkeeper, we don't have something to say like, okay, if we train you to become a bookkeeper, then you stay and work for mm -hmm. us for like three years. That's how that's, big companies That's the hard it. part about service we, business. Yeah. Right? Well, it's not just about service businesses anywhere, but mm -hmm. we, we love what we do. And yeah. so we just assume that everybody loves it. Then we, we try to create a culture and we try to create a business where... Um, a, a company where people will love to stay. Mm -hmm. And when we hire somebody, our goal is not, okay, we want to keep you for at least one year. Yeah. We hope that we can keep them till we are retired mm -hmm. on the beach. This is like telling my, my team that. <laughs> my, <laughs> on the beach. Yes, my, my, my goal is to have company retreats on the beach somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody works from a beach yeah. and stuff like that, right? But that was a huge, um, a huge, you know, Hiring your first employee is a risk, mm -hmm. but then starting to hire instead of one employee, start hiring like three people at once mm -hmm. in hopes that at least two will stay. Okay. That's a huge risk. Yeah. And it's, it's a risk that is totally and utterly worth it mm -hmm. because it suddenly you go from, I don't know, $100,000 to $300,000 in mm. income, yeah. you know? Um, so it's 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 absolutely worth taking the risks, investing yeah. into people. Wow, yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to. Um, all right, <clears throat> talking about risk and rewards, but also you know risk as fast as far as a business owner, right? I've learned that for myself that I had to put myself in debt to learn and kind of grow from there. What would you say? What's your what's your input on, on, on risk? So, again, as somebody who comes from Eastern Europe, I have... So, my mom, um, we had a lot of debt. And what that meant for me was debt that was never repaid. Mm -hmm. So, what that meant is that sometimes my mom would be in the house and the creditors would come to the gate and they would ring the bell and she would send me out and say go tell them I'm not at home, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. that, was, that was my childhood. Mm -hmm. It was horrible. Loan sharks. Loan yeah. sharks. It's not even loan sharks that exist here. It's friends and family. It's worse. Yeah. It's friends and family. Yeah. It's, it's, it's neighbors. It's whatever, right? So when it comes to that, I, even today I'm very scared of it. But when it comes to that in business, a good friend of mine opened my eyes about this. Um, we were talking about he's in software development and basically their their goal is to become a unicorn mm -hmm. um and, uh, and, and a as, unicorn is when you hit a billion right as yes, a company as evaluation, yes. as evaluation. Yes, evaluation. Okay. Yeah. yes and uh, we were talking about this and he was mentoring me through some financial difficulties and i said i could just i, I can't understand how can you go and get a loan and give up some parts of your company mm -hmm. for it, right? And he said, well, Alex, I want you to think of this. It's like you go out and you get that, and your company right now is worth $100,000. Mm -hmm. If you go and you get that $100,000 equivalent to your company, and you give up, let's say, 10% um, mm -hmm. of your company, and you kept doing that over and over and over, it, suddenly your company is not worth $100,000 anymore, but it's worth $1 billion. Mm -hmm. What do you want? 
to not have that and still be $100,000 and have 100% of your company? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to be a $1 billion company and own just 1% of that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I might have not said the, 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 the thing, yeah. the math right here, but that was an eye opener. Yeah. What that, there is such a thing, and I've been studying this more and more there is such a thing as good debt mm -hmm. you know if if that takes you places or gives you an experience or or helps you hire people or helps you multiply your yeah. income go for it um i would i would add a couple caveats and these these are things that we have learned um as we've navigated this space is um to, to have a good cash flow plan. Um, and this, this was a lesson we learned the hard way. Um, have a good plan for cash flow. Have a good, um, it, call it budgeting if you want. I mean, that's not a very, it's not a very sexy word, but budgeting is kind of important. Have an idea of how much money, you know, what's your revenue, what are your expenses, and make sure that you have room in there to make that debt payment. And sometimes you kind of dive into the, the unknown when you when you take on an obligation like that and you're you're launching some new something new right give yourself a deadline like by this date i must have the cash flow i must create the cash flow to be able to sustain this going forward right um <clears throat> give yourself that deadline and if you if you if you are approaching that deadline and you can tell you're not going to make it that's the moment you, you have to choose that deadline in such a way that you're still giving yourself time to pivot okay. if you need to, right? But you have to have that plan. Don't just take out the money, you know, get your startup <laughs> loan or whatever, dive off a cliff and then just spend it and you don't even like respond or react until the money's almost gone. Yeah, yeah. You know? but this is what I'm talking about. Good debt. Yeah. You know, good, debt. good debt yeah. means you have a plan, you know how you're going to repay it. You're putting the money yeah. aside. Every business, in my opinion, every business should have at least six months worth of cushion. Okay. Yeah. You know, whatever happens, six months is a very good pivot point. Um, and if you, if you have that kind of cushion, you can do a lot of things. Okay. You can make decisions about, mm -hmm. you know, selling your assets. It is enough time to sell your assets. It's enough time to hire more people, mm -hmm. to fire more people whatever you need to do, but you, you have to have that kind of cushion okay. in your yep. business. Of course, this is not going to happen when you start yeah. out. Um, when you start out, I would say the question, a couple of questions is, number one, how can you replicate yourself? That's when you start thinking about hiring your first okay. person. And, and that has to be very, very important question in your mind is, how can I replicate myself? Mm -hmm. Because nobody is going to know your vision, your your talents, mm -hmm. the way you know them, yep. right? So how can you replicate yourself? That's the number one question. Number two um, is, do I really need, like, what's your goal? I worked, I also coach people, and I have worked with people who, um, I don't know, bought a BMW mm -hmm. to show off that their business is going yeah. so well, right? Come on, really? <laughs> like, what does it matter more is, it's like when you're pulling up, like when you're pulling up to the restaurant, guess what? Nobody is sitting in front of the window yeah, and looking, <laughs> what kind of car did you drive yeah. here, right? Yeah. And if it's, if you're so ashamed of your car, um, don't walk them out to the car. <laughs> leave five minutes before. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or wait till they leave, yeah. Plan it out, right? <laughs> Buy the car when you can afford it. Um, do you even need it, right? I, I know a lot of businesses who um, started out and the, the first question was, okay, now we need an office, yeah. we need chairs, we need this, and they go mm -hmm. out and take a loan um, and they spend the money and then there is no money coming yeah. in. Um, you have a very good example of this with the, soft, the, with the computer that they bought, um, software. Oh, we, yeah, we were actually, it's, this isn't our story. Um, our lawyer was telling us about it, this company that he was working with, and they just, they invested tens of thousands of dollars. Mm. 
was, I think it was some, some kind of e-commerce. Um, and this was before e-commerce got really big mm -hmm. and there, we had platforms like Shopify. Yeah. Um, but they spent tens of thousands of dollars developing this software database that would be able to handle high quantities of orders. Um, and so then they could they could use the software to track the orders and then do the fulfillment and get everything shipped. And they just they spent all of their savings on this and barely made any orders. You know, like yeah. it was it was very poor planning on their poor yeah. part. Um, and this was the story he was telling us, like they should have just like made the product and sold it, yeah. you know, and. And for a little bit, you handle those orders manually if you have to. Then when you have a bit of money in the bank, then you start investing. Yeah. You know, but you have to pace yourself, yeah. you know, yeah. and there's going to be different aspects of your business, whether we're talking financial or otherwise. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the challenges in our, our business, because it's service, right? We hire people. Well, we have to go get work for them to do, right? Yeah. So like keeping those things paced, that's, yeah. that's tricky, you know, but that's the work of a business owner. I um, wanted to... I think there's so much to be shared that I, I don't want to, you know, go, get to the um, ending here. I want to be able to uh, go and, and do a part two, right, where we okay. can kind of um, finish sharing, right? And if it has to go again, because I like, I, you know, it's this is the, the information that is needed to have those entrepreneurs. So I want to be able to, um, to do a part two, you know, mm -hmm. find some time. I know as business owners, you know, it's kind of... And how many times we have to reschedule because yeah. with sickness and all that. But I want to be able to uh, just uh, pause it here and go with the part two mm -hmm. and continue sharing more of your business, but also the knowledge and everything that you hold um, and to the listeners. So I think I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll we'll find some time. And awesome. Okay. Sounds um, good. So everyone, this is going to be part one of part two or even part three. Part three. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how much, but, you know, but... I, you know, I wanted to want to thank, uh, thank Julie and Alex just for, for their time, you know, and um, I really appreciate it. And I think this is going to be a great episode that the entrepreneur and business owners are going to learn. from. And if you have any questions, please let Javier know and we would love to answer any yep. questions. We're an open book. We love sharing because we went through, I mean, bootstrapped all of our businesses. It's hard. And bootstrap is when, when you start a business without... Any, when you any pay funding. for it yourself, yeah. like yep. out of personal funds, That's, if you have to, and I like to do yeah. or, yeah. or you know, you go get clients, and then you have expenses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, uh, for your time, and I'm excited for this episode to come out. So, thanks, Julie. Thank you, Alex. You're so welcome. Backyard bookkeeper. Thank you. <laughs> thanks.